manipulating this action in a certain mathematical way, you can get all these equations which are in the theory. So it's a way of a shorthand way of telling your colleague what is your theory. Hmm. Uh, and, and this action is very practical in, in that sense. And it was invented in the, I think, 18, no, 1800 numbers. Mm -hmm. It goes back to the, what is now the <laughs> next to foregoing <laughs> century. I see, I see. And so what, what does uh, your theories about the, the future say here as well? Yeah, then? now it... we have, uh, now this action uh, I could also mention is um, is uh, coming into a formulation of the quantum theory which one has to use today, yes. which was developed by these people, Bohr and, uh, and uh, Einstein and uh, um, Heisenberg. Heisenberg, and, and was initiated by Planck. Yes. Uh, this quantum mechanics can be formulated according to a, a, a functional integral, what says, but by means of an action. We have in an, in a, by means of formula, we have one involves the action. And, uh, and then basically our theory consists in that instead of, as one usually does, and what is probably the truth, that this action is a real number, it's just a positive or negative number, with many with decimals, of course, for each history, then we uh, allow it to be a complex number. So we say we have, in addition to the real part, we have i times another real number. And this i is a square root of minus one. Uh, you know that uh, complex numbers, they are obtained by essentially pretending that you can find a square root of minus one or of negative numbers. Mm -hmm. You know that in true real number working, square root of, of negative numbers is nonsense. There are no negative number multiplied by itself that gives a negative number. Yeah. But uh, there is uh, in, the, in the complex numbers, and then you, you denote these ones by means of the i. The i is a minus, uh, square root of minus one. And, and in the complex number system, you can take square roots of negative numbers also, of all numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then that is the game. But that is somehow all uh, the, uh, the mathematical things. Then we uh, calculate in principle with this, uh, uh, Feynman, Wenzel, Dirac uh, functional integral, this method of getting quantum mechanics by means of the action. And, uh, and then we have not calculated exactly, but we make a lot of speculations and so on. And then we, we come to the approximation that very likely uh, we may still get essentially the same equations of motion approximately as you got in the theory without the imaginary action, but that this uh, complex action, without, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but that the part of this action, which is a new part, the one that multiplies the i, which is the square root of minus one, uh, that will get the role of being an expression that will determine which solution uh, to the equations of motion is going to be realized. That is to say, these equations of motion we have in the uh, coming out when we use the real action, these equations of motion, they have many solutions. You, you, you can think of Newton's uh, um, uh, second law that you, uh, that you have the acceleration is equal to a, for, uh, 
mass times acceleration is equal to force, and then you you can solve and find many solutions to this. For instance, you can have the famous apple falling, mm. but if you, instead of letting it fall, throw it a little bit up, it falls in a different way, but it is still a solution to the equations of motion. Right. So right. you have many possible developments that agree with the equation of motion. Mm -hmm. And that could also, you can think of the whole world as developing according to some equation of motion. And then I'm stressing that there are many possible ways it could start, and they will give different developments. But depending on the start, you get different developments. So now we are so ambitious that we would like also to determine the start and get that out of our mathematical formalism. And then the point is that this extra part in the action, which is the imaginary part, the one that comes to the little i, which is the square root of minus one, that part is supposedly determining not so much the equation of motion, but rather the selection of the solution to the equation of motion, which means how the system started. So what I'm saying in short is that the universe or your system gets started in such a way that a certain quantity, which is called the imaginary part of the action, should be actually as small as possible, as negative as possible. It's probably negative, so it should be numerically big, but negative. Mm -hmm. And this then selects just that right start, which the universe takes. Hmm. So you, w what you're talking about is, is basically uh, how it all began. We, we we're talking a big That's bang exactly here. That's exactly right, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying that how it began is to be determined in our model by the beginning that would give the most negative value for the quantity called the imaginary part of the action. And the imaginary part of the action is that part of the action which stands in the complex action with a little i, which is the square root of minus one in front. Huh. Uh, so how how is your work being done? Or are you guys sitting around and and calculating a lot? Do you run computer models, or how do you go about well, checking it? Well, in principle, uh, in principle, you could now think of a kind of God in quotation mark mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, evaluating for every solution to the equation of motion, which means everything agreeing with Newton's second law and so on, the equations for the field, the usual equations of motion from the real theory. He, he, would, uh, he would calculate what is for this start, for this start, and for this start, another start. He would calculate this imaginary part of the action according to a moderately simple formula. You can write it on a few transparencies. Hmm. But to calculate it for all histories of the universe, that's, of course, beyond any computer realistic. Yes, yes. <laughs> but for God, in quotation mark, maybe everything is possible. See, so he would do that, and then he would select precisely that start, uh, that history, you could say, which is given by the start, mm -hmm. which would give the minimal value which means the most negative value of this imaginary part of action. So, see, uh, uh, if we even further try to clarify this, w would you say that we are talking about uh, that that this uh, model w would would uh, kind of uh, suggest that there is a god here in the picture, that there is a force here who who is who is guiding events, or or what's the what's the outcome of this? What's the yeah? The no, you can say. Uh, that uh, when I talk about God in quotation mark, it really, of course, just means that this is a way of talking about our model and this is not a really God. Yeah. Or so. okay. But I think that this uh, uh, having a mechanism to determine the, uh, the initial conditions, the starting conditions in the way I have been describing that is extremely close to a, a god, yes. in a way. Yes. Because 
it is like having a government of the development of the universe. Because um, 